So I think we do this thing wrongly when we talk about the NFL scouting combine. Peep game. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> While we're quick to point out stats like of the 103 underclassmen granted what the NFL still calls special eligibility to enter the NFL draft early, 30 went undrafted in April 2019. In 2018, 35% of underclassmen went undrafted, and by January 22nd of this year, 99 players declared early for the NFL. Many of them are absolute monsters. Grant Delpit, J.K. Dobbins, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, T. Higgins, Isaiah Simmons, Jerry Judy, C.D. Lamb. Some of them are simply outstanding college players like Cole Komet, James Lynch, Patrick Queen, DeAndre Swift. Others are just dudes. Now, by sheer math, not every one of these dudes who was invited to the NFL scouting combine will get drafted. Check it. There are seven rounds with 32 selections each. Shout out to my Kumon sensei, Joy Hoffmeister, who taught me 7 times 32 is 224 and made sure I didn't leave the program until I got to level O. Now, couple this with the knowledge that, according to NFL.com, 337 players were invited to Indianapolis to compete in the Combine this year. It means if you drafted every player from the annual league meet market, you'd still be left with 113 players who wouldn't be drafted, who are, by definition, of earning an invite to the Combine, 337 of the best players across two college football classes, making up a pool of 6,500 players. If we just stick to the rough math of 25 scholarships per class times two times 130 FBS teams, and you'll note, of that 6,500 player pool, I am not including the FCS, Division II, Division III, or NAIA classes, or redshirt seniors. Now, Flip that thinking into knowing you, by your Larry McMurtry lonesome, are probably just as good at making draft picks as your favorite team's front office and general manager combined. The members of the all-time dubious scouting combine draft picks is an eye-popping list of train wreck incompetence and unintentional comedy. Like Tim Tebow, he was, you know, selected the 25th overall pick in the 2010 draft as a quarterback. And that dude didn't even go through the QB drills at the combine because he was trying to fix his broken throw in motion and didn't want to display that travesty at the public pro day we all agree matters. I feel like a quarterback should be able to throw in his underwear whenever possible and should. He had one decent series in a wild card game but was so bad as an NFL quarterback that the Broncos traded him to the New York Jets and he continued his slide into an SEC network analyst role and the AAA Syracuse Mets. I didn't even know the Syracuse had Mets. Point is, the Broncos spent a first round pick on a guy who wouldn't throw a ball in his underwear. Bust. In 2012, the Jets wasted a second round pick on Stephen Hill, a man who played wide receiver in an option offense, but he ran a 4.36 in the 40 coming out of Georgia Tech, so they took him and he turned in 594 yards receiving and four touchdowns in two seasons. Bust. In 2007, the Tennessee Titans used the number 50 overall pick on running back Chris Henry, a man who averaged just 3.3 yards per carry and never rushed for more than 600 yards in four years at Arizona. But he dropped 4-4 in the 40 at the combine, and that was enough for the Titans. In 11 games across four friggin' years, with zero starts, he rushed for just 122 career yards. Bust. I will never let my dad forget that the Seattle Seahawks selected linebacker Aaron Curry with the number four overall pick in the 2009 draft class. Coming out of Wake Forest, he ran a 4.58 in the 40, jumped 37 inches in the vertical, and that was enough for Seattle to make him the highest pick at linebacker since LeVar Arrington went number two overall in 2000. But LeVar Arrington? Aaron Curry is not. K.J. Wright made like Killer Mike and Opie and ran the jewels on Curry spot. Cook Curry Indian style and gave him the runs out the league. Bust. Al Davis was still searching for the next Tim Brown and used picks on four of the 14 fastest dudes in the 40 at the Combine in one friggin' year, 2006. Now, it should surprise nobody that the Raiders used their 2009 first-round pick 
on Darius Hayward Bay after he laid down a 4-3-40 at the Underwear Olympics. Means the Raiders took DHB over Jeremy Macklin and Mike Crabtree and one hell of a week what year for wideouts. Percy Harvin, Kenny Britt, yeah. Hakeem Nicks, Brian Rabisky, yeah. Muhammad Masakoy all went in the first two rounds. Yikes. Bust. Plural. Now, no combine bust bid is complete without a ritual annual dragging of the Philadelphia Eagles for selecting defensive lineman Mike Malula with the seventh overall pick in the draft, 1995, on the strength of his NFL combine performance, which I, I got to tell you was actually pretty good. A 4-5-8 in the 40, 38 and a half inch vert, and more reps on 225 on bench than the top offensive tackle in the draft that year, Tony Baselli. That was enough to inspire Philly to trade up five spots with Tampa Bay to, sele- to select Mamula, right? The Bucks were fine with this then as they are now because they used the 12th pick to select pro football Hall of Fame defensive lineman Warren Sapp. So while you watch the Underwear Olympics, do your own evaluation. Make your own big board for your team. You'll hit just as much as you don't. And remember, you did that from your couch. And don't take the raw numbers of who didn't get drafted as a means of saying that a guy can't play. It's all fit. It's all work. It's all luck. But you can't get lucky with the fit without the work. And if this is what you're using the NFL scouting combine to do, showcase work, great. I'm all for it. But we all know the guys that can play. Why do we even need the meat market anymore? Doses.